basically how it works is there's, a, there's an important neuron in the brain in the hypothalamus called the candy neuron. Normally this neuron is controlled, its firing is controlled by estrogen. But of course in menopause, estrogen levels drop and that control is lost. There's another control point on this neuron, and that's the NK3 receptor. Um, as an antagonist of the NK3 receptor, fesulinotan can decrease the firing of this neuron. The reason that's important is this neuron synapses at the thermoregulatory center of the brain. So by decreasing that fire, firing, it, it, it releases the sensitivity at the thermoregulatory center, and that's the way it works to basically treat vasomotor symptoms. So basically what we just ran was a phase 2B trial. Again, we previously ran a phase 2A trial in Belgium, which was quite, uh, quite, gave quite significant and positive results. Uh, this phase 2B trial really was all about looking at different dose levels and looking at once daily versus twice daily dosing. So it's a larger trial. Basically, uh, about, about 352 patients were uh, screened for this study, uh, about, about 40 plus patients per dose group. Uh, there were eight arms in the study. This was conducted at 51 different sites in the U.S. Uh, the efficacy of both with regard to once daily and twice daily dosing was clear. So significant results um, on both, on both vasomotor, frequency, uh, vasomotor symptom frequency as well as uh, severity to decrease both of those parameters. Uh, so basically we met all four primary endpoints, which is to decrease frequency and severity at weeks four and at week 12. With regard to general adverse events, those were similar across all treatment groups. So basically there was no important trends. Uh, one thing that we did look at very carefully were basically uh, liver enzymes. There were some uh, liver enzymes. These were, these were basically, there was a total of nine subjects. So Beth is basically less than 3% of the, of the patients in the trial. Uh, did have some uh, transient elevations of liver enzymes, that's AST or ALT. These were found on routine visits. Um, and, and basically, all, all, when patients were discontinued, these liver enzyme levels uh, returned to baseline very, very rapidly. Indeed, actually, in, in two cases, uh, the patients were actually maintained on drug, and even in those cases, there was a tendency to, to, to uh, return to baseline values. I think other important measures in this study were basically um, endometrial health. Uh, so this is actually very important to the FDA, and, and it's, it's, it's a standard to be measured in vasomotor symptom trials, especially as many of the products that are out there on the market are hormone replacement therapy. So basically, we, we monitored endometrial health both by performing uh, biopsies at week 12, that's at the end of the trial, as well as by transvaginal ultrasound. And basically, there were no cases uh, of any abnormalities by biopsy, and there were no signs of an increase in endometrial thickening. So that's an important result, I think. Also, also, estradiol levels in these patients were unchanged, and that also makes sense because fesulintent is a non-hormonal product.